Okay, I'll call the uh, hearing back into order. Uh, we took a recess because, Commissioner, you had a you were called away to the White House, I believe, for a meeting, and uh, we completed with Secretary Chu. So uh, everyone's already given their opening statement. So at this time, uh, we would recognize you for five minutes for your opening statement. Well, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and and to. Uh, you and, and uh, the other chairman uh, of the two subcommittees and the ranking members, Rush and Green, and members of the other, uh, other members of the subcommittee. I'm honored to appear before you today on behalf of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And given the events that are unfolding overseas, my opening remarks will focus on the crisis in Japan. And I have additional information on the fiscal year 2012 budget that I've submitted for the record. Of course, I'd be happy to answer questions on those matters, but I'll focus my, my testimony on the situation in Japan. I would first like to offer my condolences to all those affected by the earthquake and tsunami in Japan over the last few days. My heart goes out to those who have been dealing with the aftermath of these natural disasters. And I want to publicly acknowledge the tireless efforts, professionalism, and dedication of the NRC staff and other members of the federal family in reacting to the events in Japan. This is just another example from my six and a half years on the commission of the dedication of the NRC staff to the mission of protecting public health and safety. The American people can be proud of the commitment and dedication within the federal workforce exemplified by our staff every day. While the NRC regulates the safe and secure commercial use of radioactive materials in the United States, we also interact with nuclear regulators from around the world. Since Friday, the NRC's headquarters operations center has been operating on a 24-hour basis to monitor events unfolding at nuclear power plants in Japan. Since the earthquake hit northeastern Japan last Friday, some reactors at the Fukushima No. 1 plant have lost their cooling functions, leading to hydrogen explosion and rises in radiation levels. Eleven NRC export experts on boiling water reactors have already been deployed to Japan as part of a U.S. International Agency for Inter Inter International Development team, and they are currently in Tokyo. Within the U.S., the NRC has been, been coordinating its efforts with other federal agencies as part of the government response to the situation. This includes monitoring radioactive releases and predicting their path. Given the thousands of miles between Japan and the United States, Hawaii, Alaska, the U.S. territories, and the West Coast, we are not expected to experience any harmful levels of radioactivity. Examining all available information is part of the effort to analyze the event and understand its implications both for Japan and the United States. The NRC has been working with several agencies to, assist, to assess recent seismic research for the central and eastern part of the country. That work continues to indicate that the U.S. nuclear facilities remain safe, and we will continue to work to maintain that level of protection. U.S. nuclear power plants are built to withstand environmental hazards, including earthquakes and tsunamis. Even those plants located outside of areas with extensive seismic activity are designed for safety in the event of such a natural disaster. And the NRC requires that safety significant structures, systems, and components be designed to take into account the most severe natural phenomenon historically reported for the site and surrounding area. The NRC then adds a margin for error to account for the historical data's accuracy. This basically means that U.S nuclear power plants are designed to be safe based on historical data from the area's maximum credible earthquake. And the NRC remains attentive to any information that can be applied to U.S. reactors. Our focus is always on keeping plants in this country safe and secure. As this immediate crisis in Japan comes to an end, we will look at whatever information we can gain from the event and see if there are changes we need to make to our own system. Within the next few days, I intend to meet with my colleagues on the Commission on the current status and to begin a discussion of how we will systematically and methodically review information from the events in Japan. In the meantime, we continue to oversee and monitor plants to ensure that the U.S. reactors remain safe. The NRC will continue to monitor the situation and pro provide updates via press releases and our public blog. The N our NRC also stands ready to offer further technical assistance as needed. We hope that this situation will re be resolved soon 
so that Japan can begin to recover from this terrible tragedy. Now, I would like, if possible, to give you a brief update on what we believe the current status of the reactors in Japan is. There are essentially four reactors that we are currently um, monitoring as best we can. They are all at the, the Fukushima number one site. Three of those reactors were operating at the time of the earthquake and were shut down following their normal procedures. We believe that in general for these three reactors, they have suffered some degree of core damage from insufficient cooling caused ultimately by the loss of off-site power and the inability of the on-site diesel generators to operate successfully following the tsunami. We also believe that these, for these three reactors that seawater is being injected with reported stable cooling. The primary containment is described as functional. Now I would note that for unit number two at this site, we, are, we are believe that core cooling is not stable. But also for that site, we believe at this time that primary containment is continuing to function. I would also note that for unit number two, we believe that the spent fuel pool level is decreasing. For unit number three, we believe that the spent fuel pool integrity has been compromised and that there has per perhaps been a Zerk water interaction. Now, in addition to the three reactors that were operating at the time of the incident, a fourth reactor is also right now under concern. This reactor was shut down at the time of the earthquake. What we believe at this time is that there has been a hydrogen explosion in this unit due to an uncovering of the fuel in the fuel pool. We believe that secondary containment has been destroyed and there is no water in the spent fuel pool. And we believe that radiation levels are extremely high, which could possibly impact the ability to take corrective measures. For the two remaining units at this site, we have an IA, IAEA report that the water level was down a little bit in this spent fuel pool as well. And for the final uh, reactor, we don't have any uh, significant uh, information at, at this time. Recently, the NRC made a recommendation that based on the available information that we have, that for a comparable situation in the United States, we would recommend an evacuation to a much larger radius than has currently been provided in Japan. As a result of this recommendation, the ambassador in, in Japan has issued a statement to American citizens that we believe it is appropriate to evacuate to a larger distance up to approximately 50 miles. The NRC is part of a larger effort, continues to provide assistance to Japan as requested, and we will continue our efforts to monitor the situation with the limited data that we have avail available. So that provides a general summary of where, of where uh, the incident stands. So with that, I would uh, end my testimony and be happy to answer questions you may have. Thank you. Well, Commissioner, thank you. We appreciate your being with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, in the earlier uh, question and answer period with Secretary Chu, uh, the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Markey, had referred to a finding by Mr. John Ma, for I believe is his last name, M-A, relating to the AP-1000 design. And uh, he had indicated that, that Mr. Ma had some serious reservations about the design. And I was just curious, uh, have you all had the opportunity to review his concerns and have you come to any conclusions about that? Uh, we have uh, done a very thorough review of the AP-1000 design uh, relative to a large number of safety issues. Uh, as part of that review process, we have had a, a vibrant discussion uh, among the members of the NRC staff. Uh, we have thoroughly reviewed as part of that discussion the, the concerns uh, by one of our staff members that you indicated uh, and we believe, based on, on uh, a thorough analysis, that uh, that design uh, going forward can be, uh, can be uh, acceptable. 
Okay. Uh, it is right now in a process of, uh, of additional review. Uh, it is right now out for public comment, essentially. We do our designs almost like a regulation, so we allow them to be commented on by the public. And so we're at that stage in the process of, of that review. But uh, the concerns, while uh, we believe would certainly uh, enhance the safety uh, of the design, we don't believe at this time that they're necessary to meet our, our, our strict regulations. Right. Well, thank you for that comment. I, I just wanted to follow up on that. Uh, of course, as a result of what's happened in Japan, the focus is on safety as it relates to nuclear. And I believe this is a safe industry over historically. It's been a safe industry. And I know that in France and Japan and many other countries, a large percentage of their electricity comes from generation by nuclear. In the U.S., it takes, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I may be, but it takes roughly 10 years or so to obtain uh, permitting for a nuclear plant. I is that, am I in the ballpark when I say 10 years or, or, or not? Well, I, I think uh, right now, it, the process has taken, I would say, closer to about five years right now to go through the, the permitting. Now, of course, we're not finished, uh, but we are getting nearer to the end of our reviews. Uh, and I, I like to think about this in a way like uh, uh, when I went to college. Uh, you know, everybody goes to college with, uh, who, who people go to college with the intent to graduate in four years. Uh, but as you go through that, that process, you, um, you take your classes. If you do well, you, you have a chance to get done in four, sometimes a little bit, a little bit sooner. Uh, some people take a little bit longer time depending on how things go. So as we continue to work with the, with the licensees or the applicants, we've, we've I think, improve, improved our understanding of how to make the process work effectively and, and efficiently. So uh, right now, this has been the first uh, of a kind uh, effort and something we haven't done in a long time, and it involves a new process. So I, I, I would say at this time, I think we're moving at a, a, a relatively uh, uh, effective pace, um, but again, keeping our, our focus first and foremost on, on safety. And uh, in your testimony, you did say that you evaluated these uh, permit applications for seismic as well as tsunami type activities, correct? That's correct. We review uh, all, all designs against a, a wide range of natural disasters, tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes. It just depends on the geographic location. Right. Well, with all the publicity surrounding uh, Japan right now, uh, Everyone, as I said, is certainly focused on safety, and w w we do are certainly thinking about the Japanese people. But with more focus on safety, uh, I'm not a nuclear engineer, but I know that there is some technology uh, based around sodium-cooled reactors. And I've been told that sodium-cooled reactors, that there is not a uh, possibility of a meltdown, and that these are smaller type uh, plants, maybe 50 to 100 megawatt plants, and I was wondering if you would mind commenting on that uh, technology of uh, sodium cool technology. Well, we don't uh, currently have any specific applications in front of us for uh, a sodium cooled uh, design. Uh, I would say uh, it's a it's a different type of technology than what we currently uh, have operating in this country, and it. Uh, as a result, it presents its own challenges uh, when it comes to safe uh, operation. But you know, I wouldn't want to speculate too much uh, on, on what those kinds of challenges are because we, we really haven't gone through the specific review of one of these. But in general, uh, with a smaller reactor, uh, a, a larger, a smaller energy output, usually the risks are lower because you just have uh, a smaller amount of radioactive material. Right. But as I said, the sodium reactors do present slightly different technical challenges because of the way that they operate. The, the sodium has to be maintained in a liquid form, uh, and there are, there are different types of, uh, of risks and hazards that you would have right. with that type of design. But that technology, I guess, was developed in the United States at one point, and I, there are some countries that evidently have at least some of these plants in operation. Is that your understanding? Uh, yeah, that's my understanding, but we don't currently have any license in operating in the U.S. Okay. Well, thank you very much. My time's expired. I'd like to recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Rush, the ranking member. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and see Chairman Yasko, it's good to see you, and welcome uh, to the committee. Uh, I'm going to get uh, my um, J uh, Japan question in first. Uh, <coughs> The crisis in Japan is first and foremost on the mind of many of my constituents in Illinois. 
for a real specific reason. We've got more reactors in Illinois than any other state. Uh, <coughs> and my constituents are asking a simple question. Um, <coughs> and that question uh, was summed up in a Fox Chicago News headline uh, published on Sunday. Should Illinois be worried about its nuclear plant? And before you answer the question, I want to also note that we, Illinois lies uh, within the new Madrid earthquake zone, although we, not, we do not have to uh, worry about tsunami, tsunamis. Uh, but what assurances can we give to the people of my state with as high concentration of nuclear reactors that also sits on an earthquake zone? And in your uh, answer, would you please uh <coughs> speak to the uh, possibilities and to uh, the uh, effect that a tornado, we are in a tornado zone, that tornadoes could have on uh, uh, nuclear reactors? Well, Congressman, we, um, at the NRC, we focus every day. Uh, the, the dedicated women and men at the NRC work every day to make sure that nuclear power plants uh, in this country continue to operate safely. Uh, all the, the nuclear power plants that are, are in the United States are uh, reviewed against a very significant uh, uh, standard for seismic activity. We take what is what we can find out from the historical record from looking at the, 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 the rocks and the, the geology and the seismology we try and determine what we think is, is the, the largest earthquake that can happen in an area. And from that, we do an analysis of, of what kind of effect we think that will have on the power reactor, namely how much will a building shake or what kind of forces will it, will it feel. And we require that, that the, the nuclear power plants can withstand that kind of event. Uh, and we actually go a little bit larger than that just to make sure there's, if there's any uncertainties in our analysis. So that's a, a part of what we do uh, for every reactor in the country, whether it's in the Midwest. Of course, the, the seismic activity may be different uh, in that part of the country versus another part of the country. Yeah, it, it seems to me, though, in Japan, it wasn't just the earthquake that caused the problem. It was the tsunami that really caused the problem. And my question, and that, uh, my question is, in terms of a tornado. We, we look at tornadoes as well. We right. actually look at all... Uh, all natural phenomena, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, although, as, as you indicated, some sites in the country don't experience all of those phenomena. But uh, we look historically to make sure we've captured all the natural phenomena that occur. So in Illinois, uh, we certainly would examine uh, the impacts of tornadoes and other, uh, other extreme weather events in, in, uh, in Illinois. Okay. It's, it seems to me, I asked this question of the Secretary this morning, that the number one threat to nuclear facilities in this nation is, um, is terrorist actions and activities and acts. So can you uh, re speak to the how uh, the, is the NRC handling terrorists uh, and the threat of terrorists? Well, we have a very uh, robust program uh, that uh, requires nuclear utilities to, uh, to ensure that they can protect their plants against, uh, against terrorist-type attacks. Uh, that includes a very uh, strong uh, program to do uh, exercises every, uh, every th once every three years to actually participate in a, in a, uh, uh, a mock uh, terrorist attack on the facility. Uh, and we, we observe that and oversee that and ultimately uh, use that as a way to, to ensure Once every terrorists. three years? Once every three years. In addition to that, we do uh, conduct uh, our normal inspections uh, at the facilities to make sure that all the security systems are in place and, and operating effectively. And I would add that in addition, uh, following September 11th, we, we required all of the nuclear power plants in this country to, uh, to look at some of the more severe kinds of uh, impacts and effects you could get <coughs> at a nuclear power plant from a terrorist attack or other types of <coughs> severe natural phenomenon. And as a result, well, we require them. time is almost over, and I just okay. wanted, I'm, I'm headed to, uh, on Friday, I'm headed to Dresden to uh, tour the generator station there in uh, rural county, Grundy, uh, uh, Illinois, and in northern Illinois. And I'm going to be there with some of uh, your resident inspectors uh, on location there. So I'm giving your regards.
Well, good. Well, I appreciate that. And they're, uh, we're very fortunate to have some very fine people at our power reactors overseeing them. <coughs> this time, I recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Shimkus, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, and welcome, Mr. Yasko. Uh, when did the licensing board return its decision denying the Department of Energy motion to withdraw its Shucka Mountain application? Uh, I believe that was uh, earlier in, uh, uh, in the uh, I believe end of June. End of June. Thank you. Isn't it true that all commissioners participating in the decision making relating to the license board decision have already filed votes on that matter, including you? I, we have filed what I would consider to be preliminary views that we exchange uh, uh, among our among our colleague among our colleagues on the commission. Those are views that we use then to inform our final decision making. So you're saying you have not filed votes? Uh, we have not come to a final decision at this point. When. So so it's your position you have not filed final votes? Uh, that is correct. We have not reached a final decision uh, on our act. Uh, unlike perhaps here, uh, your familiarity with, with voting, uh, I, would, uh, I would consider votes to be more akin almost to um, prepared statements and remarks of, of members of the commission. Uh, the practice of the commission is to circulate those prepared remarks on any of the things that we do. Uh, and then based on, on, on those circulated views, we work to see if there is a majority position. So you're saying that on October 29, 2010, there wasn't final votes cast by all commissioners? Uh, on October 29th, I believe we had, we had all prepared our, our final, our, we had prepared our, our, our written statements that we circulated among so us. So do those uh, written statements are considered votes? They are considered votes, but they are not the final decision of the commission. Okay, so since you have written statements that are considered votes, when do you plan to schedule a commission meeting? We will have a meeting and issue an order when we have, per statute, a majority position. And so you have these statements, they're considered votes, but you don't have a majority position. Correct. As I, as I indicated, the, the terminology here, I think, is, uh, is unfortunate. Uh, these votes are not, as I said, the final uh, statement of the commission. In an, in an adjudicatory matter, which is what this is, a formal hearing that we issue, the, the final statement of is the Is there a minority order. decision already rendered? There is no by decision by the commission at this point. By the chairman? There is no decision by the commission. Was the NRC decision to close out Yucca review and hearing activities yours alone or one made by the full commission? Uh, that was a decision that I made as chairman of the agency consistent with the budget that was prepared by the commission. Okay, but let me ask you this question. What was your legal authority to do so? Uh, my legal authority was, uh, was as, as chairman of the commission. And it was uh, fully, the decision was fully consistent with, with appropriate law. No, I think your position is that the budget zeroed it out, but I, I would beg to, to differ that you had the legal authority to do that. I, I would respectfully disagree with that. Well, I think we will review that and, uh, and follow up. And I, I would add, if I could, uh, that following that decision... Uh, I mean, you wouldn't do anything that would be illegal, would you? Of course I wouldn't. Uh, following, following the decision to begin the close-on activities of the Yucca Mountain project... Well, uh, uh, begging the differ, I, I think it's a, a stated federal position by law that Yucca Mountain should be open. That's the legal authority. There's no legal authority to close Yucca Mountain. There, the only authority that's been rendered is uh, the administration in compliance with Majority Re Leader Reed to pull funding. But there's no legal authority to close Yucca Mountain by law. As I indicated, our, our action is consistent with, with all appropriate appropriations law and any other statutes that we have. Uh, I would, uh, you better you better be double checking your uh, facts because we're not through uh, with this debate on legal authority. And, and I hope you're well prepared. Uh, we have been told that the courts may not rule on whether or not the commission's position is legally defensible until the full commission takes a position. But you seem to be preventing that vote from occurring. If the court runs out of patience and does rule, will you abide by the court's decision and act promptly to carry it out? The, the agency will act according to any legal decision by the courts or any act of Congress. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. This time, I recognize the gentleman from uh, California for uh, Mr. Green for five minutes. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, uh, Mr. Hosko, and, and um, I know you're busy, and I appreciate you coming back uh, to our committee. And I know last week you and I talked about the, uh, the President's budget uh, and, the and the proposals to go back to FY08 mm -hmm. for your funding, and we both expressed concerns about uh, the layoff of hundreds of workers and particularly what happened in, in Japan. Obviously, this is not the time to go after our Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, so I share that, and I hopefully that message will get to other folks. Let me talk about a local issue, because I think all politics is local, and it's what's happened in Japan. Texas has uh, one proposed nuclear plant that's pending at the OMB, and they're receiving their funding from CPS Energy, NRG, and Tokyo Electric Power Company, um, which presents part of the problem. One of the sites experienced problems. They own one of the sites that's experiencing the problems in Japan. And so knowing what may happen with their uh, potential investment, uh, CPS Energy and NRG have announced they have trouble finding new investors. Again, part of it's the market. We have low natural gas prices, and for someone to buy into a long-term investment of nuclear power, which our country needs, but we may not be able to get the investors. Can you talk about the review process for new plants like Texas and how long NRC and OMB process has taken? It seems like I've worked on uh, on the congressional side now for a number of years to get the expansion at the South Texas plant that's just southwest of Houston. And, uh, and just to see just some information on how long it took, for example, for that expansion that goes through both your process and the OMB. Well, uh, right now, um, the South Texas project was one of the first applications that we received uh, for new licensing. Uh, that project it will, the review that we do for that project will be focused for sure on safety and security. That's always our primary focus. Uh, we're continuing to do that review. Uh, we're, we're nearing uh, some significant milestones as we work to complete the actual uh, design reviews for, for that type of reactor. Uh, that design review right now is out for public comment as part of our process, and we anticipate uh, having that back in and working to resolve the comments over the summer. Uh, if we resolve those comments in, in a successful way, then we would move forward with, with completing uh, the final reviews that are, are necessary, possibly uh, perhaps by uh, within, within 12 months or so. Uh, but we, as I said, I want to reiterate, our, our focus fundamentally is, first and foremost, is on the safety and security of these designs. When you said it was a fir one of the first applications, can you tell me the time frame when that was filed? Uh, it was approximately, I believe, 2007. Okay. Uh, however, uh, we immediately, or uh, within several months, had to uh, suspend our review uh, because the, uh, the applicant in that case uh, made a, uh, a change in the vendor that they were using to yeah. support the design. So that took about a year, a year and a half to work through that particular uh, issue on the part of the applicant. Okay. I know the concern literally for the whole world and particularly for our own country, if what, we, uh, what we're doing, making sure we're learning from what's happening in Japan, and I understand the South, uh, the Texas plant southwest of Houston has actually three safety backup systems instead of two. And it's my understanding that Texas emergency power sources are separate and watertight. We don't have a problem on the Gulf Coast with, uh, uh, with you know, tsunamis or earthquakes. We do have a hurricane every once in a while and tornadoes. But uh, I understand that they have watertight concrete buildings and withstand a, a hurricane or storm surges and even, even earthquakes. But like I said, I don't think in geological time we've had an earthquake along the Gulf Coast. Our soil's too soft. And, uh, but the, the agency actually looked at that plant and all the applications, like you said, for safety. Uh, that's correct. We look at all the plants for uh, a variety of natural phenomena. And then uh, on the Gulf Coast, uh, that can include uh, uh, seismic activity, hurricanes, uh, uh, and other types of events. Uh, and we do have some... Uh, analyses to look at tsunamis uh, along the Gulf, Gulf Coast and, and, and portions of, of the Atlantic Coast. Those yeah. wouldn't be expected to be tsunamis that are of the same magnitude as ones we, we could so see. That particular plant's about 11 miles inland. It's mm -hmm. not right on the coast. I know there have been technological advances. I'm almost out of time. But sometime I'd like if, you, if your staff could present, uh, provide to the committee separately some of the technological advances in the current and proposed plants in the United States is compared to, for example, what's happened in Japan with the tsunami and also the earthquake. So we can certainly provide that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Upton, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, 
Chairman, we welcome you here today. Uh, and I, I just want to say a couple things at the beginning. Uh, first of all, I certainly did appreciate our meeting that we had uh, several weeks ago. Uh, I know we, we both uh, discussed the yucca. We may have a different view, but we're, we're going to have ample time. And Mr. Shimkus' uh, subcommittee with, with all the uh, commissioners uh, sometime this spring uh, to, to fully uh, uh, talk about that and ask a, a good number of questions. Uh, as you know, I'm a, as you do, we both support safe uh, nuclear power. Uh, we both support uh, appropriate and rigorous uh, oversight of all of our 104 sites uh, around the country. Uh, I'm, uh, and I, I too appreciated uh, the visit that I paid to the NRC several years ago and viewed uh, firsthand the NRC Operations Center and uh, looked in in terms of your your day-to-day -day activities uh, to make sure that things are safe. Could you tell us uh, what specifically the functions are of the 11 folks that you've sent to Japan and, and what they're doing and they're reporting back to you and uh, some of the information you might have received? The, the 11 individuals that we have in Japan are providing a, a variety of services. Uh, they are uh, helping to organize uh, the, the look at the, the reactors, the nuclear uh, look at the reactors, uh, and helping to provide uh, a, a good coordinated team uh, to provide assistance to the embassy in, in Japan. So does Japan have a similar operation like we have in terms of the operations center that I visited uh, in Maryland? Uh, it's uh, my there? understanding they do, but I'm, I'm not uh, Terribly familiar with, but they're in Japan. they're in Tokyo, right? They're not at the Fukushima site. Our, our right? staff is in Tokyo, working to interface with uh, with their counterparts in the Japanese nuclear nuclear regulatory authorities. And as you announced that y you would urge uh, our ambassador now has urged all Americans to move at least 50 miles away. Uh, what reaction have you did you receive from your counterparts in Japan and the and the government there? Uh, I'm not familiar of, a, of an, any reaction. But that's a recent. I mean that that announcement was made very sh shortly, right? It was uh, made uh, just like an hour ago, about uh, 45 minutes ago. Um, where you, you talked about the specific, the, uh, the four different reactor vessels and the status of the four. Do you know where the hydrogen explosion was in the fourth reactor? Uh, at this point, we don't know that kind of specific uh, information, but we, we believe that there was a, a hydrogen explosion at some point, likely because the spent fuel in that, in that reactor uh, has uh, lost uh, its cooling and, uh, and at some point then was producing uh, some degree of hydrogen, and that ultimately accumulated and led to an explosion. And was that explosion today, uh, U.S. time, today? Uh, no, it, it occurred uh, several days earlier. Um, we can get you the exact date and time as we, as we know it. Okay. Um, as it relates to your budget, remember that was the original ask for you to be here today. Uh, what is your budget for safety oversight as, as part of the NRC? Uh, the number we have, the, the bulk of our budget, uh, probably about the three quarters of our budget goes to the reactor safety uh, work, about 77 percent. Uh, so it's, it's slightly over uh, approximately $800 million. So does that include the personnel? As I visited my two sites in, in my district, uh, and I would welcome you, and I, I know that you indicated a, a willingness uh, to come out, uh, but uh, on all of my visits, I've always uh, stopped to, to say and, and welcome the, the oversight uh, of, of your staff that's been there. Yeah, it, most of our budget does go to our staff. We have a, uh, it's mostly salaries and benefits. Uh, we have a small portion of our budget that's contracting uh, dollars, but the, the bulk of it, about 80 percent, is, is, uh, is, is the, or I'm sorry, is about 60 percent is the salaries and benefits uh, of, of the staff. And do you have any reason to believe that your proposed budget is not adequate to assess and monitor the nuclear power plant safety systems? I mean, do you feel that it fits the bill? At this time, we believe it is, uh, it's a sufficient request that will allow us to do the work we need to make sure that plants stay safe. The and only caveat I would add is if uh, as we continue to review the situation in Japan, it, it becomes apparent that we would need additional resources uh, to, uh, to address uh, issues related to the situation in Japan, then we would perhaps have to come back and ask for additional resources for that. Well, I was going to ask you if you thought you're going to need, uh, will, you, will, will you be able to determine that within the next couple of weeks? We, uh, I intend to meet with the Commission uh, within the next several days and, and begin looking at the kinds of questions we have to answer, and I think that will be one of the first. But First, we want to kind of systematically figure out what it is that, that we need to look at and what are the important sources of information. But you don't really have a reserve cushion today to do that, is that right? For uh, fiscal this year time, 2011. 
Uh, at this time, I, I would say we don't necessarily have that. But again, I'd like to take a look at that first before I, I make any conclusions. Okay. Well, again, I appreciate your willingness to be up here on a day uh, as tough as it is today, to, um, and we appreciate your answers and look forward to working with you on a, on a host of issues. Thank you. I yield back. Recognize the gentleman from California for five minutes, Mr. Waxman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Yasko, you described a pretty dire situation in Japan. I, I want to ask you about this. A, a, uh, an official from the European Union today used the word apocalypse to describe the potential damage that could occur in Japan. What is your reaction to this comment? Could Japan be facing widespread devastation from a nuclear meltdown or a radiation release? Well, I, I don't really want to speculate too much at this mm -hmm. point on what, what could happen. I think uh, people are working really very uh, diligently to try and address the situation. Uh, it is a very serious situation, uh, w without a doubt, uh, and that's part of the reason why I, I thought it was important for the agency to make the statement it did, that we thought in a comparable situation in the United States, we would have issued uh, evacuation instructions to a, a larger a larger distance away from the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a very serious situation, uh, and uh, and efforts are, are ongoing to try and uh, resolve it, but it, it will be uh, some time, I think, before it's finally resolved. Yeah. Well, you, you said that you're recommending an evacuation of U.S. citizens within 50 miles. What are the risks that, they're, uh, that are causing you to make this recommendation? Well, it, it's based on an assessment of the, of the current conditions of, of the site. Uh, because of the, the, the damage to the spent fuel pool, we believe that there's very significant radiation uh, levels likely around the site. Uh, and given that the, the reactors, the three reactors that were operating, given that they are uh, operating with a, uh, a more of a, a, a backup to a backup, if you will, uh, safety uh, cooling system, uh, if, if anything goes wrong with that, it would be very difficult for emergency workers to get into the site and perform uh, emergency actions to help maintain that cooling. Uh, so is, there is the likelihood that, that the, the cooling functions could be lost, and if they are lost, it may be difficult to replace them, and that could lead to a more, a more significant damage to the fuel and, and potentially uh, some type of release. So as a, as a prudent measure with a uh, comparable system situation here in the United States, we would likely be looking at an evacuation to a larger distance. So is it the, um, is it the spent fuel problem in this uh, Unit 4 uh, where there's no water covering the fuel rods? Is, 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 is that the, the greatest concern you have at the moment? Well, I think it's, it's all of the factors together, really. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the combination. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there's the possibility of, of, of this progressing further. Uh, and so, as I said, in, in this country, we would probably take the prudent step of, of, of uh, issuing uh, evacuation to a larger distance. Uh, high levels of radiation are being released from the pool, is that right? Uh, we believe that around the, the reactor site that there are high levels of radiation. Again, we have very limited data, so I don't want to speculate. And what would be the significance of that? Uh, the significance would, uh, well, f first and foremost, it would mean it would be very difficult for emergency workers to get uh, near to the reactors. The doses that they could experience would potentially be lethal doses uh, in a very short period of time. So. Uh, that is a very significant uh, development and uh, uh, largely is what prompted uh, the agency to make the statement that it did. And if they can't, if the emergency workers cannot get in there because of the danger to themselves, wh wh what would be the possibility then to, d to deal with this problem of the, of the spent fuels? Well, again, I, I, I don't want to speculate too much because, uh, again, we don't have uh, uh, direct uh, uh, information about the conditions uh, on the ground. but. Uh, it's certainly a, a difficult situation and one that needs to be addressed. Well, you describe uh, serious risks at these facilities. Can you describe what you think are the highest risks and why? Uh, at the, the sites in Japan? Yeah. I think right now, uh, as I think has been the, the situation from the beginning, the efforts are to continue to keep the reactors cool, uh, the three reactors that were operating uh, uh, at the time of the earthquake. Uh, and that is uh, right now being done with a, a variety of different, uh, different systems uh, and, again, in a uh, uh, more of a non-traditional way because they have lost a lot of their um, electrical power and their uh, off-site power capabilities. Uh, in addition, the other risk is really to the spent fuel that may be in the spent fuel pools for, for uh, possibly up to six, uh, six of the reactors at the site. So keeping those pools uh, filled with water and keeping that fuel uh, 
uh, cooled is, is also then uh, uh, the primary concern. And what's the significance of the report of a crack in the, in the unit itself, uh, in the, containing, the containment unit? Uh, the, well, the, I, I want to be clear, the, certainly the indication uh, that I was referring to was a crack possibly in the, the spent fuel pool uh, on one of the other units. Okay. And the significance of that would be if there is a crack, then there's the, the possibility of water draining from that pool and perhaps a, an inability to, to maintain the appropriate level of water in the pool, which could lead to, uh, lead to a damage of the fuel in that, in that pool. What would you say is the best case now for Japan, and what do you think might be the worst case? Well, I, I think certainly the efforts are to continue to provide cooling uh, of the reactors and to do everything possible to, uh, to provide cooling to the, the spent fuel pools. I, again, I don't want to speculate on what, on what could happen because, um, uh, you know, it is a very dynamic situation and uh, there are uh, 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 you know, certainly a lot of efforts that are being undertaken with efforts of the U.S. government in particular. I want to I emphasize that this is really a U.S. government response. The NRC is playing one small part, but other assets have been located uh, from other uh, parts of the U.S. government uh, and are being provided to help provide this cooling and do what we can. Thank you very much. Uh, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Barton, is recognized five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chairman, for being here on what's obviously a very difficult day for you. Um, you may have answered some of these questions before or you may have even commented on them in your opening statement, so I apologize if I ask something that has already been addressed. My understanding is that the systems, at the safety systems at the uh, power plants or the reactors in Japan are an older technology that requires an active backup and that the licenses that you're reviewing now um, have a different system that is a passive backup, i.e., if something, if, if something happens catastrophic, the system automatically shuts itself down and the cooling system can perpetuate itself without outside power. Is that correct? Well, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to comment too much on the Japanese sites because I'm not, um, uh, th their, their designs are a little bit different from, from the designs we have that are similar in this country. But uh, we are reviewing, uh, new reactors that do operate in what they call a passive cooling system. It is not all of the designs that we're reviewing, however. It's only uh, two of the designs that we're looking at. But Well, um, my understanding is that there is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there is one new nuclear power plant under construction, and that's the Southern Company facility in Georgia, and that their safety system is a passive safety system that if you were to, of course you won't have a tsunami in central Georgia, but you, would, you could have an earthquake. And if there were to be an earthquake, that it would automatically shut itself down without outside intervention. And the coolant is a gravity flow cooling system that perpetu self-perpetuates itself again without any outside power. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. The, the system that is used uh, for that particular design, which is the AP-1000, uh, does uh, essentially rely on gravity to initiate circulation of water through the reactor and then uh, naturally circulate based on the heat flow. It will, it will circulate without the use of, of off-site power. However, there are other safety systems that do, um, do rely uh, uh, on the off-site power. And, but uh, we, could, we could say in the instance of the one new plant that's currently under construction, what happened in Japan, um, assuming the construction of the plant uh, is robust enough that the containment is not destroyed by the earthquake, that, that in terms of cooling the reactors and shutting down the reactors, uh, they, would, they would be shut down and they would stay cool. Well, again, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to speculate on everything. We don't really know uh, what happened in Japan. We obviously know there was an earthquake. We know that there was a tsunami. We know a lot of safety systems haven't functioned uh, as, as would uh, be, be needed. Uh, so, uh, you know, at this point, I don't really want to speculate on how that applies to any U.S. facilities until we have a chance to really do a methodical and, and systematic. Well, I'm not asking that. you to speculate on what happened in Japan. I'm asking specifically if an earthquake hit the power plant in Georgia, based on your agency's review of their safety design, would it withstand that earthquake? 
uh, all of the plants that, we, that we've licensed and all of the plants that we are currently uh, reviewing will meet strict safety standards uh, for earthquakes and other natural phenomena. So certainly for the existing plants, we believe absolutely that they, they can withstand an earthquake and they can meet the high standards that, that we've put in place. And the new plants, we're still continuing our review. We haven't completed our review, so I don't want to I don't want to prejudge the outcome of that by making any final determinations. Okay, but you are you are allowing this plant in Georgia to be constructed, so you've approved something. It's a it's a preliminary uh, approval for a limited amount of construction activity that's not related to the most safety significant systems at this time. Now, in general, for each plant in the United States regardless of where it's located, does it have a minimum safety requirement to withstand an earthquake? Uh, that's true. Uh, all the plants have a requirement to be designed to deal with the kinds of earthquakes we would expect in about a 200-mile radius from that nuclear power plant. Now, obviously, if a plant is in an area that's more prone to earthquakes, it might have a higher requirement than a plant that's in a location that's never had an earthquake in 500 years, but they all have to withstand some base case earthquake design criteria. That's correct. They all have to withstand what we think is the maximum expected earthquake from the historical record uh, in within about a 200 miles of, of, that, of that now, site. Now, I'm told that the earthquake that, that hit Japan is order of magnitude the fifth most powerful ever recorded anywhere in the world. Uh, so that's obviously a very powerful earthquake. In the, in the United States, is the design criteria currently for that level of an earthquake, or is it for an earthquake that would be, say, the standard that the earthquake that hit San Francisco in 1906? Would you like me to answer? I well, would like you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I. Um, I, I think it, it's important. I, I, I want to try and give a, a demonstration. I think we, um, we we talk a lot about the magnitude of the earthquake, and that's not really what what the NRC looks at. Uh, if I um, if you look at the cup of water that I have over here, and you think of that as the nuclear reactor, uh, the earthquake would be. Uh, probably should fill up the water. Yeah. This is going to make TV, so do it right. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced it before I started, so. Uh, so if you think of this as, as the nuclear power plant, the earthquake, and when you talk about the magnitude of the earthquake, it would be like me hitting the table with my, with my fist. So something like that. And you'll see that it makes the glass over here vibrate. That's what we actually measure and we design our nuclear power plants around is, is, that, is that shaking of the, pl the power plant. So the actual impact depends upon where I, where I hit in relation to, 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 to the glass. So if you have a large earthquake like this that's very far away, may not have the same impact on a, on a site as an earthquake that's maybe a little bit less but much closer, so something like that. So we actually worry more about, we look at all of the different earthquakes that could happen in this region, and we look at what that shaking is, and we make sure that that shaking can handle what we think are the maximum historical earthquakes in that region. Now, no, go ahead oh, and sorry. summarize. <laughs> in addition to that, we know that we don't always know everything. Uh, so we, we've done a lot of studies over the years to look at earthquakes and phenomena beyond that kind of uh, uh, design earthquake. Uh, and we've, we've had the plants go back and look and see if there are things that they could do to ensure that they would be able to better withstand some possible earthquake that nobody's thought of or, or, or seen uh, at this point. Uh, and so we have what we call severe accident programs that all of the, the utilities have where they have procedures and they have uh, 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 ability to, to mitigate that kind of more severe event that may not ever have occurred in a particular region. So it's a, it's a multi-layered multi system uh, of defense. And if I could just briefly summarize one other point. Uh, in addition to that, following September 11th, we required all of the nuclear reactors in, uh, in this country to uh, pre-stage equipment that can perform this emergency last kind of ditch effort cooling to the reactor and the spent fuel. And that's a, 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 that's a variety of procedures and different types of equipment that 
are required to be at the reactor sites and we've inspected the reactors to make sure that they have that so you know that gives you another level of defense beyond really just what the design of the reactor is thank you and thank you for the chairs courtesy let him answer that question generally in california is recognized five minutes and mr chairman if you wouldn't mind granting me a little consideration um, I represent Diablo Canyon Nuclear Facility, and I have pa three packed questions, but something was stated earlier that I believe needs to be clarified just for the record. If I could ask the chairman, um, in addition to thanking him for his testimony, did you say that Unit 4 in, in, uh, the, in Japan, in the uh, incident there, that there was no water in Unit 4 surrounding the, the spent fuel, and that Unit 3 was in danger of losing? The water source? We believe at this point that Unit 4 may have lost a significant inventory if not, uh, if not lost all of its water. And that Unit 3 is in danger? Uh, well, I would say it, what we know at Unit 3 is that there is possibly, a, again, and our information is, is limited, so we, we do, what we believe is that there is a crack uh, in the spent fuel pool for Unit 3 as well, which could lead to a, a loss of, of water in that pool. Thank you. Um, Diablo Canyon nuclear facility in my congressional district sits on the Hosk Reef Fault Zone. Then um, in 2008, the U.S. Geological Survey informed the utility that a new fault had been found near Diablo Canyon. It's called the Shoreline Fault. You're well aware about the California law requiring the Energy Commission to perform reviews of the se seismic issues associated with our state's nuclear plants. Sure. The Energy Commission recommended and our state PUC directed that independent peer-reviewed advanced seismic studies be performed prior to applying for relicensure. Um, do you think the NRC should take advantage of the talent, expertise, and resources available uh, in California so that all information on seismic issues could be analyzed with the goal of avoiding uh, costly duplication? Well, we uh, ultimately, we, we have to make uh, decisions as an agency based on the technical review that we as an agency do. Uh, and I, again, I, I can't get too far into some of these issues because we do have an ongoing hearing uh, related to some of the very points that you've raised. So uh, in our hearing process, we're, we are prohibited from discussing those things uh, outside the well, context of the commission. All right. I'll, I'll tell you what it seems to me mm -hmm. and to my constituents that having the best eyes and minds in our country working together uh, looking at the seismic issues uh, makes the most sense. Um, it, it, first and foremost, for my constituents, this, this is about safety. Uh, but seismic concerns also impact affordability and regional uh, reliable generation as well. Um, so I hope that this issue can be revisited, um, not to take away from the responsibility and authority of the federal agency, but mm -hmm. to work with other agencies. And I, work, I look forward to working with you as we go along in this area. Well, Congresswoman, if I, if I could just briefly sure. say, we. Uh, we actually did host a workshop uh, uh, within the, the last year, uh, actually that brought together a lot of these technical experts to have a, a discussion. For the point that you said, we, we certainly are always open to hearing information from any technical expert uh, that can provide uh, uh, information to us. So I just want to make the point that okay. in the end, the decision making has to come from our, right. our expert staff. Right. Here's another question. My constituents have become increasingly concerned about the preparation for a station blackout event. If power is lost, they want to be assured that backup power will be available throughout the duration of an accident in order to prevent fuel melting. In the last half decade, both California reactors have been cited by the, you, by the NRC, for instances in which both backup diesel generators were down or there were problems involving back battery power availability. In such instances, merely citations uh, were given uh, to the uh, utilities. Should the NRC reevaluate its regulations and perhaps increase the penalties for such infractions in light of the accident in Japan as an incentive to force better compliance from the nuclear operators? Well, as I said, we intend to do a very systematic and methodical look at uh, at any lessons we can learn from uh, from this uh, this Japanese incident, and uh, I certainly will keep your suggestion in mind as something for us to take a look at. Finally. I'd like you to address some safety issues in the event of an earthquake and a simultaneous accident at a nuclear plant. Diablo Canyon has a workable evacuation plan. They wouldn't be able to operate without one. But as you may know, there's basically only one way in and out of San Luis Obispo, narrow Highway 1 along the coast. The NRC has ruled that it was non-credible that there could ever be multiple catastrophes such as an earthquake and a meltdown at the plant. The, this is the quote from the NRC. 
The Commission has determined that the chance of such a bizarre concentration of events occurring is extremely small. Not only is this conclusion well supported by the record, e uh, record evidence, it accords most eminently with common sense notions of statistical probability. That's the end of their quote. Now, we have just witnessed an earthquake, a tsunami, and a nuclear meltdown all occurring in sequence. I want to ask the Commission, if you would, on my behalf, do they still believe the chance of this bizarre concentration of events is merely hypothetical? Do you think this decision should be revisited um, uh, in, event, in light of the events in Japan? Well, I, I certainly will, will take your suggestion back to the, the Commission. Uh, I, I would want to review that entire document uh, in, its, in its entirety because uh, certainly we do, uh, we do examine the possibility of earthquakes as an initiating event for a, a possible uh, reactor problem. Uh, of course, we believe we have systems in place that would, uh, one, really prevent any kind of core damage from that, but two, if there is subsequent problems, uh, we have mitigating strategies and other ways to, to cope with those. So uh, I, I, I would just if, if be happy to take a look at that document in its entirety. Thank you. And uh, just in conclusion, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, you know, that's what they said <laughs> two weeks ago, uh, no doubt, in, in Japan as well, enormous uh, uh, anxiety and, and sadness over the events that happened there. And here we have seen in the past year our three major sources of energy that this country uses, uh, coal, oil, and nuclear, all experiencing tr tragic accidents. And uh, I do look forward to working with you, our committee, with your uh, commission on uh, the number one goal of, of uh, uh, keeping our, our energy sources safe. Thank you. Thank you. And Congressman, if I could just add, I, uh, of course, uh, you understand we have not had any nuclear incidents uh, in, in the last year in, in this country. Uh, the, uh, the, there may have been the incidents were in other countries. The gentleman from West Virginia, Mr. McKinley, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, does the, um, the NRC, the NRC uh, still have the authority, uh, given the, in light of what's happened in, in uh, Japan? I assume you still have the authority to grant the permits for continuing. Um, the de design implementation of nuclear facility? Uh, certainly, uh, the, the, the agency is an independent regulatory agency. Is, so g given, uh, uh, is there any delay? Or are you hearing anything that would set up? Uh, I, I would expect some extension might be necessary, but what would you suggest is a reasonable time frame for someone making an application? Well, as I said, I think the, the, the process of, of reviewing uh, um, uh, an application for a nuclear power plant is a very complicated process. Uh, and uh, it, this is the first time we're, we're doing this, the first time we've done it in a long time. So I think there's going to be some lessons uh, that we learn, both the applicant and the agency. Um, so I, I don't want to get into kind of speculating how long or, or, or surmising how long I think it should happen. I would just say that, you know, we will do the thorough job okay. we need to do to ensure safety of. of do you the have, um, uh, given that that this also is a, a, for budgeting, uh, I haven't seen. Do you have some R and D money um, um, allocated um, for researching alternate uses for spent fuel rods? Uh, we we currently uh, in our budget right now um, uh, have a, a significant uh, resources that we are using to look at spent fuel, uh, the safety and security of spent fuel, and, and transportation. Uh, we have a small piece of our budget that's looking at uh, reprocessing and developing a, a framework for reprocessing, which would be perhaps uh, uh, what could you're you, referring could, to. If you could send more to me, I'd, li I'd like to know a little bit more about it. And, th and let's go to the uh, uh, Yucca Mountain just for a moment. Uh, I don't know whether it's anecdotal or, or accurate. I know, of course, that the, the application has been withdrawn. Uh, but um, it, it was my understanding that consumers are still paying on their utility bills funds for that project. Is that accurate? Uh, I believe it is, although I would add that that's not a, an area that the NRC has authority over. But is that accurate? Uh, I believe it is, but again, I, I, I don't follow that very closely other than generally what I read in the press. Okay, I'm just curious because it sounds, it, from what I understand, that we're, we're collecting money for something that's never going to happen, you don't you don't understand that. Um, what what about shipping port? Um, I think that was the first facility we had in this country, isn't it? Um, given I think it was 
maybe was that 65, 63? When was when was Shipping Port open? Uh, I don't have the exact date of the uh, initial license, but it was very early on in the in the U.S. nuclear program. In in light of the circumstances, and maybe I don't want to do knee jerk reaction at all to this, but will you be looking at some of the older facilities to see what new technology or has Shipping Port been upgraded all along? Uh, ship, shipping Port is no longer an operating reactor. Is no longer an operation at all. So what happens when the when the shipping port goes out of opera, it goes out? Uh, any any of the reactors is when they go out of service are eventually decommissioned, uh, and we've decommissioned a, a large number of reactors in this country. Okay. Um, there was also a story in the media that one of our naval vessels sailed through a, a cloud out off Japan's. Were you aware of that? Uh, yes, we, we did have indications that uh, it, it, the early uh, days of, of this incident, uh, the reactor was going through a process that uh, uh, involves uh, venting steam that accumulates uh, in the reactor uh, uh, containment structure. And that, and that steam needs to be released in order to, to reduce the pressures uh, in, that, in that containment vessel, which is one of the important barriers. Could that have been avoided, the ship going through that? Could that have been avoided? Well, uh, my understanding is what they were performing uh, activities to uh, to support uh, search and rescue efforts in Japan, and that the doses that they were uh, experiencing were uh, from that uh, particular uh, plume were were uh, not doses that would have a significant impact to health and safety. That's all. I uh, yield back my time. Thank you very much. Thank you. This time, I recognize the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Markey, for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome. Um, what uh, interim safety measures um, are you going to require uh, while you study the issue? In Germany, they're uh, taking interim steps right now, as well as Switzerland, China, Venezuela. Are there any steps you would like to announce that you are going to take in, in order to ensure that the plants in our country are safe? Well, we, uh, Congressman, we continue every day to make sure that the plants are safe. Uh, and at this time, we don't have any, uh, any specific actions that we think are, are necessary uh, to, uh, to uh, add to the safety of the facilities that, that, uh, beyond what we do. Are there any interim advisories that you are going to send out? After 9-11, the NRC sent out some interim advisories. We, uh, we after uh, Fukushima, are, are you planning on doing that? We, we do intend to send out what we refer to as a regulatory information summary uh, that, will, uh, that will generally characterize the event uh, at the, in Japan. Again, at this point, we don't have detailed information, but that will remind uh, licensees of, of course, their obligations uh, under their existing license, but as well as these additional measures that I talked about to um, uh, these severe accident types of, of strategies, as well as the, the efforts that we Im implemented after 9-11 to put in place these uh, systems and uh, procedures to, um, to ensure that they could provide emergency cooling to the reactor if necessary. Um, going back to the question which uh, Chairman Whitfield asked you about Dr. Ma and his concern about the uh, AP-1000 design, uh, you said in your, uh, with your vote that while it is clear that the use of ductile material in all areas of the shield building would provide an additional enhancement to safety, that I am not convinced that such a design requirement exists. Um, after um, uh, what's going on in Japan right now, would you reconsider that in order to perhaps consider uh, adding that uh, ductile material as part of the process of the construction of AP-1000 plants? Uh, as I said, I think we'll do a, a very thorough review of the information from, from Japan. And the, we don't anticipate uh, getting to a, a, a final decision on that design for uh, at least until the end of the summer. So uh, I think there will be plenty of information from our review at that time to inform that decision. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I authored legislation in 2002 that required the distribution of uh, potassium iodide uh, to residents living within a 20-mile radius of nuclear power plants uh, based upon a Sandia uh, study uh, because we learned after Chernobyl that uh, this cheap medication can prevent cancers caused by radioactive iodine. Uh, the Bush White House ignored my language and blocked an effort by HHS to implement it. In fact, they even took away HHS's uh, power to, con to, complete, uh, to complete it its uh, KI distribution guidelines. Uh, the Obama administration has not implemented it, even though the Surgeon General has just said yesterday that she thought it was worthwhile precaution for West Coast uh, residents. 
don't you think that the distribution of potassium iodide to residents within twenty miles of nuclear power plants is a common sense measure that should be implemented well the particular protective actions that would be issued for any nuclear power plant incident are the ultimately the responsibilities of the state and local governments they have that primary on the ground responsibility to decide how to deal with an accident so but the plants are licensed by the nuclear regulatory commission right by the states you're the agency of expertise in terms of the spread of nuclear materials not state officials do you believe that it is advisable to look at a twenty mile radius for distribution of the current policy of the commission is that potassium iodide would be one of the the protective action that could be considered within what we call our emergency the bush guideline was that for ten to twenty miles people should just stop running or ducking under their bed do you think because that's there is no other medicine so is there is there a recommendation from you that they should look at potassium iodide for the ten to twenty mile radius again i would really in many ways defer to state and local governments as they believe that that's appropriate i think there certainly are many protective actions that could be taken i just don't think that they have the expertise looking at the probabilistic risk assessment of the likelihood of an accident in terms of having k i there now the san onofre reactor is also rated to withstand a seven point zero earthquake should we should we be retrofitting those reactors to ensure that they can withstand much stronger earthquakes the i a e a won japan two years ago that their nuclear power plants were not designed well enough to withstand a strong earthquake and they were only able to withstand a seven point zero earthquake that's what san onofre is designed to withstand should we be looking at retrofitting of the san onofre plant and plants like that well as i said the the plants are actually designed to the ground motion and the shaking that you would get at any any facility and uh... And that's based on what we think are the um, the most, uh, or well, what are really the, the what's the maximum uh, earthquake that's that's occurred in any particular uh, area. So, uh, it, it it doesn't directly necessarily mean a 7.0 earthquake. It's it's what we think is the maximum credible earthquake, and uh, and I, I continue to believe that that's the appropriate standard for the agency. But again, we will we will take a look uh, at all the information we have from Japan as that comes in and. And if we have to make modifications to our requirements, we will. I would just hope that maximum credible earthquake would be reexamined after what's happened in Chile, New Zealand, and Japan. And we'd be in the other part of that uh, earthquake zone that has yet to have uh, an earthquake uh, so that we do have the proper protections. The gentleman from uh, Louisiana, Mr. Cassidy, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, are you all just, I'm a, I'm a physician, so I'm going to speak about it and sound like a physician. Uh, in effect, there's going to be a post-mortem done on that accident, and folks are going to go in there and see what went wrong and learn from it to ideally keep it from occurring again. Now, um, are there going to be people from industry invited to that party, if you will, or to that post-mortem, or would it only be um, academia and government? It seems all three need to be there, and so I, th I don't think I've heard you mention having industry there to kind of, yeah, what do we do? Thoughts? Well, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't yet decided how we'll go about uh, our, our review, but I, I want it to be systematic and methodical. Those are the two words that I think are most important right now. Uh, and in our normal uh, practice uh, as an agency, we always reach out to stakeholders, not just industry, but uh, public interest groups and other members of the public. So I would expect that whatever we do uh, as part of this process, we'll have a significant public involvement. Now, let me ask, because when I toured the nuclear power plant near, near my home, I'm, living, I'm from Louisiana, so it's the Riverbend Nuclear Power Plant. As I recall, they were coming up with a fail-safe mechanism to keep the generators running, even if there was something dire that happened to the plant. I gather what has happened here is that the tsunami, because the diesel was on the ground, washed away the diesel, so they were unable to run the generators. So just for the reassurance of folks here, uh, frankly, my, my city, if you will, it seems that we've been proactive on that particular issue so that there is a backup to the backup to the backup to keep the generators running to pump the water in case you see where I'm going with that. Well, we, we do. And again, I don't want to speculate on exactly what happened in Japan because we, we really just don't know. I yet. think I'm channeling CNN right now. We <laughs> We, uh, all, all the diesel generators at nuclear power plants uh, in this country are considered uh, vital equipment. Uh, the emergency diesel generators are vital pieces of equipment. So they are designed, uh, as with the other safety significant structures and components, to, to be able to withstand the natural phenomena. So if, depending on the plant, that could be hurricanes, tornadoes, 
tsunamis, earthquakes, whatever the, the natural phenomena are that are relevant to a particular site. Uh, so, I, so, so, but is not knowing that you that we're not speculating what happened in Japan, but just to go to the point, the backup generators to keep those cooling units running, uh, we do have pro we have proactively addressed this in this country, and there is a way if a Hurricane Katrina comes through and hits my state, that uh, and one system goes out, there's another system to keep it running. Is that my understanding? Uh, that's correct. Each each reactor has uh, at least two g diesel generators. Uh, in the event that one of them can't uh, perform its function, there will be an additional. Uh, in addition to that, many states have. Uh, I'm sorry, many sites have uh, uh, what we call a, a station blackout diesel or, or some other type of electrical power supply that can can function in the event that uh, that those primary emergency diesel generators are not operating. And then, of course, in addition to that, as, as I've referred to, the, all of the, the, the plants in this country have been required to, uh, to look at pre-staging uh, other additional emergency equipment that could deal with this kind of situation. You mentioned that. Not it, in some cases, that, that would be uh, uh, electrical power supplies or portable generators and things like that. Got you. You may have answered this next question. I'm sorry I was out of the room for a bit. Um, clearly, we're talking not just uh, natural disasters but man-made. Do I understand that new nuclear power plants, or do I not understand correctly, that they have to be built so that if there is a terrorist attack and a plane is driven into them, that somehow it is still protected? Uh, for the existing fleet of reactors, we have required them to be able to deal with the uh, with with large fires and explosions that could occur at that at the plant, uh, and and some of that was related to the possibilities of terrorist attacks involving uh, aircraft. For new plants, what we've required them, I, I, the new designs are, are required to be able to uh, withstand an aircraft-type uh, uh, impact at the site. Now, the containment structure, um, again, you may have said this, I apologize. The containment structure, though, even if there is a meltdown, how effectively can that containment structure uh, keep it contained? Well, that, that's the purpose of the containment structure is, again, in the event that the very unlikely event that all of the safety systems fail and we're not, a, not able to keep cooling to the core and it were to eventually uh, uh, have significant fuel damage or some kind of melting, that any radiological material would be contained within that structure. Given that there's some that will be vented off, but nonetheless, if there's a disaster, it's a disaster within the containment. That would be, that's the design goal and, and the expectation. And of course, if that were to fail, we have very robust programs in place to do uh, emergency evacuation. So this is the 1970s measures. circa plant, so I presume since it dates from the 70s, since we have even more robust protections. Uh, it, it, we, we've looked at all of these plants over the years, and, and in some cases, uh, well, actually in the, the late 80s and early 90s, we did systematic evaluations uh, uh, of the plants to see what, uh, how they would deal with these kind of very severe accidents. In some cases, plants took the step of low-cost uh, modifications that would deal with these more severe kinds of events. So we have a lot of, uh, a lot of things that have been done. Uh, the plants are, are certainly not the same plants that they were when they were orig originally built and designed. Thank you very much. The gentleman from Michigan, uh, Mr. Dingle, is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your courtesy. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm sure you are making a careful review of the events that are going forward in Japan with regard to the uh, nuclear facility over there and the attendant circumstances. Um, will you make such a review? Uh, we certainly do intend to. Uh, once we have uh, good, credible information, we'll do a thorough and systematic review. Good. Now, I would assume that when you have, uh, well, first of all, one, would you submit to this committee your plans with regard to that as to how you intend to go into that to ascertain what happened? We certainly will we'll make And would you see that we're informed as, as events go forward so we know what's taking place over there? We'll certainly do that. Now, um, and would you also submit to us for the record how NRC is going to go about uh, defining uh, the lessons that you have learned ab about events in Japan and how you will incorporate them into your regulatory requirements? You do that for we'll us. We'll certainly do that. Please. Now, uh, does the NRC regularly use new information about the different types of risk as these uh, different types of risks and information come available, yes or no? Yes. Uh, would you provide for the record the process by which NRC does this risk assessment? 
Well, there's a, a variety of, of no. Just just for the record. Oh, of course. Our, our time, Mr. Chairman, is very Please. limited. Well, well, of I have course. A lot of questions here. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, do the NRC's licensing standards for nuclear plants take into account the risk of earthquake or tsunami? Uh, they uh, incorporate all natural hazards, including. I would I tsunami. would note with d distress. I think you probably remember Diablo Ki Canyon some years ago, where they were going to build right on a fault. Uh, is 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 are you more careful about that than your predecessors were in that particular? Uh, right now, uh, well, w we look at all the nuclear power plants uh, in the country. We look at seismic activity from all of them because uh, s while not all plants are in high seismic areas, almost all plants could experience some seismic activity from uh, lower level uh, earthquake activity. So we consider that for all plants. Now, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, would you provide a list of the kinds of disasters for which NRC takes uh, account of in terms of its licensing standards. Just submit that. We'll provide that. Please. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's my understanding that one of the main problems in Japan has been inadequate access to emergency power to keep the reactors cool, and that that, that poses some substantial ongoing risk. Uh, do NRC's licensing standards uh, include adequate access to emergency power, and are you satisfied that they do so? Uh, we believe that our requirements are, are very strong in this area, and we continue uh, actively in our inspection program to ensure that licensees have the appropriate equipment, such as diesel generator, and that it operates successfully. Now, Mr. Chairman, you have an unholy mess on your hands, you and the Department of Energy, with regard to Yucca Mountain. You spent, as near as I can gather, something like $17 billion um, on this that's been collected from ratepayers for long-term storage of nuclear waste. Uh, the administration opposes going forward. Uh, you've got this nuclear waste that's piling up all over the country. Some of it is going into cooling ponds. You're talking about putting the rest in dry cast storage. Do you have any kind of long-term plan to address what you're going to do with this infernal mess and how you're going to deal with the problem? Well, right now we, uh, we're looking at a, a longer time frame for storage of spent fuel than, than we have in the past. Uh, but right now we believe that, uh, that spent fuel certainly can be, can be stored safely and securely with the existing system. But you don't, have, but you don't have a plan for, for how you're going to deal with it. You're being sued by the electrical utilities because they're collecting monies uh, from their ratepayers that are not being spent on the purposes for which they're being collected. Uh, the stuff keeps piling up, and you've doubled the, the amount that you can store in a single pool, but that's, that's running out. You're running out of pools in which to store it. And as these plants close, you're going to, you're going to perhaps lose the responsibility of the persons who are storing this thing, and and the the stuff just keeps piling up. Is is there a long-term plan anywhere in government, in your agency, in the Department of Energy, uh, in the Office of Management and Budget, or in any other agency of the federal government as to what we're going to do about this infernal mess? Well, the uh, although it's not uh, uh, an area that we are directly working, the Secretary of Energy has convened a, a Blue Ribbon Commission to uh, to look at some of those longer term options and see what an optimal approach. The answer, is. the answer, Mr. Chairman, is no. Is it not? We uh, don't have. No, I believe there are plans uh, through this Blue Ribbon Commission to look long term, and but we believe certainly from the agency the, that the, the existing answer, systems are. The are answer, my beloved friend, is no, and I say this with respect and affection. But the simple fact of the matter is, you're sitting on a, you're sitting on a mighty fine mess that nobody knows what to do with, and it, 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 in each and every one of those situations, offers unique opportunity for terrifying mischief to, the, to the broad public interest and to the people in the in the area, and the cost of this whole sorry ass mess keeps growing up and going mm -hmm. up. And we agree with you, Mr. Dangle. At this point, I'd like Thank to recognize the gentleman from. Texas, uh, Mr. Burgess, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here and spending so long with us today. Thank you for 
speaking with me yesterday at the end of what obviously was a very long day for you, and, and I appreciate your willingness to, to make yourself to members of both sides of the dais during this crisis in Japan. Um, recently, an email has been circulating, and I think it came to the committee staff that suggested a much higher level of radioactivity at one of the plants than has previously been reported. Do you know anything about that? Well, we, uh, we are continuing to, to monitor the situation as best we can. Uh, I, again, I, I'm not familiar with the email that you're, you're talking about, but we do believe that uh, certainly with uh, one of the spent fuel pools that there have been uh, certainly elevated uh, radiation readings. And over the last several days, there have been times based on certain uh, incidents in the site where radiation levels have gone up and come back down. Uh, but, but when you say elevated ballpark, are you talking about chest X-ray, CAT scan, multiple CAT scans? What what sort of numbers are you talking about? Right now, we have indications at the site of radiation levels that would be levels that would be lethal within uh, a fairly short period of time. So they're very significant radiation. Very significant. Levels. Okay, and that's different from kind of what we've been hearing before. Is that correct? Uh, again, I'm not. I, I would say it's it's certainly a, a more recent development that we've seen these very very high readings. Okay. Now, you were very good to provide us with written testimony. You were very good to provide us with some updates on the situation. It's obviously a very fluid situation in Japan. Um, would you be good enough to give us in written form what you described to us as you were finishing up your prepared testimony this, this afternoon so that there's no confusion over what we, when we quote you, the press is here and we'll all be uh, asked questions as you finish up. Could you provide us the, the written information that you would like us to have? We'll, we'll provide that for you. Because some of it, and, and I think Ms. Capps on the other side talked about a little bit. I mean, you talked about uh, uh, the spent fuel pool being dry and the radiation being high. I mean, again, things that were, were different from what I had been gathering from the, just the, 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 the press reports just prior to coming in here. And, and it would be good to see that. Uh, again, what is factual and, and what is not. We'll be happy to provide that. And I would just say that our, our information is, uh, is limited, so we've been very careful to only provide information that we believe is, is very uh, reliable. Well, now, you, we're here to talk about the budget, and the budget you prepared, obviously, was before all this happened. Uh, do you anticipate submitting an addendum uh, to the request in light of uh, things that have happened this past week? Uh, that's something we'll review at this point. I don't, I don't have an answer for you, but I will certainly come back to the committee if, uh, if we do. You've, uh, can you give us just kind of a, a back of the envelope estimate? In a perfect world, what would be the percentage of electricity in this country, in this country produced by nuclear power? Uh, it's approx approximately 20%. What is being produced now? Uh, currently, uh, I would have to, to look, but uh, I, I would uh, take an estimate about probably about that number. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any significant plant outages right now. So it would be your position as chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that the percentage of electricity produced in America would not increase over what it is today? Do I understand that correctly? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, in, in an ideal world, mm -hmm. this country maximizing all of the different energy production possibilities that we have, how much, what percentage would be nuclear? Well, it's really not up to us to, uh, to decide that. I think the agency's responsibility is to make sure that if there are nuclear power plants in this country that they continue to operate safely and securely. Do you have a concept of what would be the ideal number of nuclear plants in this country in the next 10, 20, 30 years? Uh, it's re really not, uh, certainly as an agency, we don't have a, a, a concept of an ideal number. Our, our job is to make sure it's safe and secure. How, how many would be too many for you to keep up with to ensure that they were safety? Uh, right now, we think uh, certainly we're planning for um, the possibility of, of new plants to be under construction in the next several years. Uh, so we believe with the budgets that we've developed, we would have the resources we need to, uh, to handle those additional units if they're licensed. All right. Chairman Dingell described in very colorful terms an infernal mess at Yucca Mountain. Um, if you were the king of the nuclear regulatory world, uh, the sole decision maker on nuclear waste, what would be the ideal solution, the, the sine qua non? What would you do? Well, I, as I said, I, I really I can't get too much into that because we do have an ongoing proceeding uh, with regard to, to Yucca Mountain. And, you know, my, the job of, of keeping plants and the materials and all the things that we regulate safe is, uh, is pretty much a job that, uh, in particular these days, keeps me awake almost 24 hours a day. So uh, I'll, I'll worry about, let somebody else worry about some of those other broader policy questions. 
So we thank you for your, for your activities during this crisis. Thank you. This time I recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Doyle, five Thank minutes. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman, thanks for your, uh, your patience and endurance today. Um, given what's happened in Japan, uh, I'm sure this has been a, a reminder to all of us that, that everyone agrees that certifying new nuclear designs is, is a crucial and important task to make sure these reactors are durable and can be safely operated. And I understand that the new reactor design certification process involves not only professional and an accredited NRC staff, but there's also an outside expert advisory committee that oversees the review and recommendations of the NRC staff. Is that correct? Uh, we do have an outside, well, it's an agency uh, independent advisory committee. Yeah, the, the, that's right, the ACRS. And then ultimately, you and your colleagues also evaluate and make your own independent judgments, correct? Correct. So uh, I want to address this situation to get more clarification and more on the record uh, about concerns raised by my good friend Ed Markey uh, regarding Westinghouse's AP1000. I want you to hopefully uh, provide some more clarification to the process that was involved clar uh, certifying this reactor. Now, is it true that Dr. Ma's non-concurrence issues during the deliberation for the Westinghouse AP1000 advanced final safety evaluation report were, in fact, given due consideration by his NRC staff colleagues? Uh, I believe that they were. And also the members of the Independent Advisory Committee for Reactor Safeguards? Uh, they did, uh, as part of their review, they did specifically receive a presentation from Mr. Ma about and, and you and your commission colleagues? Uh, I don't want to speak for the actions of all of my colleagues, but I, I personally met with him and, and talked, to, talked to him about his concerns. And, and, and can you tell us, uh, what happened after Dr. Ma made his presentation and raised his concerns? So he, he raised these concerns, and, and tell us what happened after that. Well, they were, uh, I think they were looked at by uh, certainly all of uh, the staff at the agency that were reviewing the, uh, the design. This advisory committee also did look at their, uh, their, uh, uh, his, his uh, perspectives, and they came to their own conclusions that I think ultimately uh, no one disputes that the, the recommendations that he had would make the design safer, but we think that the design as it is right now uh, would, would appear to, to meet our, uh, our standards. But uh, I, I would add that uh, it was also Mr. Ma who originally raised concerns uh, with a previous iteration of the design, and uh, as a result of those concerns, uh, the agency did, uh, did indicate to Westinghouse that significant changes would need to be made. Uh, they, in fact, did make significant changes, and I think uh, in some sense, Mr. Ma believes that, and again, I don't want to speak for him directly, but my understanding of his position is that he thinks that those, those changes are not necessarily um, uh, enough to, to satisfy his initial concerns. But, but it, it's true that, that his concerns were put forward and that the NRC team of reviewers uh, that throughout the drafting of, of the uh, AFSER, uh, they evaluated it and, and they basically uh, overruled his concerns basically, I, uh, as did the subcommittee, as did, I, I mean, this went through a process. I just want to make clear for the record uh, that we don't have a, a person at the department who's raised concerns and they were swept under the rug or ignored. I mean, these concerns were addressed. Is that not correct? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I feel very strongly that we, uh, we create an environment at the agency where people can raise concerns and those concerns can be thoroughly reviewed and vetted. And, and I believe in this case that that's what happened. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Terry, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you uh, for being here. I'm, I'm just curious. There's uh, uh, two power plants. Uh, Mr. Barton talked about one in Georgia, but there's one in Georgia, one in South Carolina that uh, sometime this year or early next year should be issued their uh, combined construction and operating license. There, my uh, question first is, are there any discussions occurring to delay uh, that COL now because of the Japanese disaster? Well, right now, uh, all of the, um, uh, those two plants, that are the, the potential plants that you, you referenced, are all based around the AP1000 design. Uh, that design is currently um, uh, undergoing a public uh, review process. Uh, I expect we'll get comments as a result of that public process uh, related to uh, to the situation in Japan. So we'll we'll evaluate those as we get them. Uh, so it's yes and maybe no. Uh, at, at this point, we we haven't uh, done. Uh, we're following our normal path with the reviews at this point. 
All right. It sounds like there may be some uncertainty in that process of whether they'll get their uh, combined op uh, construction operating license in 11 or early 12. Well, we uh, we were proceeding down a path to continue the reviews, uh, as I okay. said earlier. I, there's no reason to repeat the answer. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to how many other applications have been made for the uh, early site permits. Do you we, know how many are sitting with you all? Uh, we currently have, I believe, uh, one or two new early site permits uh, in, in front of the agency or expected to uh, to come. All right. Have, are there any that have uh, been uh, have been provided their early site uh, permit and now on course to go to the next level of permitting? Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how many are in the pipeline. Uh, right now we have 12 uh, applications in front of us for uh, uh, approximately 20 reactors. Uh, those are actual combined license applications. And then we have, I believe, it's two early site permits uh, that are not uh, yet tied specifically to a, an actual license for a plant. All right. Um, I've studied a lot over the last couple of years the uh, small modular reactors. I uh, just want to know what your personal opinion is, where the process is in reviewing the technology, how close we are to uh, perhaps even rolling out a pilot project. Well, we, uh, I like to think of the small modular reactors in, uh, in three groupings. Uh, we have the small modular reactors, which are very much based on the existing type of reactors that we have now, but smaller. Uh, for that type of design, which we, we call uh, integral light water reactors, uh, we would anticipate uh, in the next year or so uh, an application for uh, the, the construction of a small modular reactor type. Uh, we also anticipate one or more uh, applications for designs related to those, uh, those smaller modular reactors. Uh, the second category we have are um, what are basically called high temperature gas reactors. So it's a slightly different technology. Uh, that is mostly work that's tied to the uh, next generation nuclear plant project. Uh, and that is um, uh, an activity that's a little bit farther along or farther uh, uh, away, uh, probably more like 2013, where we might see an application. Uh, the, the area in which probably there's the least certainty is with uh, more of the non-traditional reactor types, for the instance, one that sodium cool Chairman reactors. may have raised earlier with you. Exactly. Those are much more right now in what I would call the conceptual stage. So they haven't progressed to the point where we really have detailed discussions about, uh, about possible re reviews of applications. All right. Appreciate that. I'll yield my 59 seconds to, uh, back to the chairman. Thank you. At this time, I recognize the uh, gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Scalise, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, Mr. Jack, I appreciate you uh, being before our committee. Uh, I know we have some votes on the House floor, so I'll try to be brief and ask direct questions. I think the, uh, the Secretary had indicated that uh, the United States was helping Japan doing some testing and on contamination on the ground. Do you, are you familiar with what types of uh, testing is currently being done that we're involved in, and have you all found anything right now? Well, uh, right now, my, my understanding is we have uh, are working to um, provide uh, uh, the ability to do air sampling uh, of radiation. Uh, we uh, um, have some readings of, as I said, of very high levels of uh, contamination uh, around some of the reactor sites. Uh, and uh, I, at this point, I'm not uh, sure of the origin of that, whether that's coming from U.S. Uh, uh, assistance in Japan or whether that's coming directly from the Japanese. Okay, thanks. I, I would imagine right now there are a number of applications that are pending before your agency at various levels awaiting decisions. Uh, do you anticipate that those decisions will still go forward at the current pace, or do you see anything change in there? Uh, right now, we don't, we don't have any intention to, uh, to change uh, the, the approach we're, we're taking. But as I said, we're... Uh, we're going to do a very systematic and methodical review of the information coming from Japan. And if there's some information that would require us to, uh, to revise our approach, then we'll certainly do that. Thank you. And I would imagine, you know, as, as, as with any crisis, and you know, we've experienced more than our fair share in South Louisiana, but uh, there will be an evaluation in general just to see what lessons can be learned. And, and I would imagine we'll, uh, you know, we'll make sure that if we learn some things from how they did things right, maybe how they did things wrong if they did, that uh, we can incorporate that, but in the end, to still move forward and, and not, not retreat from energy production in this country. 
Well, we'll certainly do uh, that type of, of review. And again, I don't want to prejudge what comes out of it. Uh, if we get information that tells us we need to make a change, we will. If we get information that tells us that things are, are good, then we'll, we'll continue to proceed as we are. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Um, Mr. Commissioner, I just want to ask clarification. In, in response to Mr. Terry's question, you talked about on these small modulars, there are three or four different categories, the existing type, the third type was NGNP 2013 conceptual. What determines what category a design would be in? Is that based on actual applications or is that just on general knowledge? Or? Uh, it, it's really the, I, I would say, the state of readiness of the designers and the, and the vendors themselves. So, okay. uh, the, the state of readiness of the vendors. And yes. The designers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Rush, do you have anything else? Mr. Chairman, this is <coughs> Mrs. Uh, Administrator. I would like to know uh, <coughs> if, in fact, uh, over the last five years, can you furnish this committee with the uh, <coughs> uh, infractions or violations or emergency conditions where the NRC had to <coughs> send your, uh, 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 an emergency crew to any of the facilities uh, that operates uh, within uh, the continental United States. Uh, we, we can certainly send you that information. Yeah, I'd I like to just know what level of, of responses and what level of issues that you've dealt with over the last five years. We, we will send you that information. Thank you very much. M Mr. Rush, you and I have three minutes to go vote. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, thank you for your time today. We appreciate it very much. We look forward to working with you uh, as we move forward in nuclear energy and safety and uh, look forward to future opportunities. Thank you. With that, the hearing is uh, ended.